What is Kirchhoff's first law? Now, Kirchhoff's first law is just the law of conservation of charge. So the total sum of the current going into a node or point in the circuit, that is equal to the total sum of the current coming out of that node. So let me just draw a diagram. If this is the node and you've got currents going in, and let's just say you've got three branches coming out. So this is I1, I2, this is I3, I4, I5. So the total sum of the current going into the node, that is equal to the total sum of the current coming out. So I1 plus I2 is equal to I3 plus I4 plus I5. So that's the total. This is the total current in is equal to the total current out. Or you can write this as uh, the sum of the the sum, the total sum of the currents going in is equal to the total current out that says current yeah current so that says current uh so total current in Is equal to the current total current out. What about Kirchhoff's second law? Let me just read what it says. So current, so the Kirchhoff's second law, it, it takes the is basically the current is basically the, the conservation of energy, where nothing is created or destroyed. So energy is just transferred from one to another. So, in any circuit, the sum of the electromotive forces is equal to the sum of the PDs around a closed loop. So, let me just write down Kirchhoff's second law. So, Kirchhoff's second law. So, the sum of the EMFs is the sum of the potential differences in the circuit around the closed loop So the sum of the EMFs in any circuit, or the electromotive force, is equal to the sum of the potential differences around the closed loop. So you could say in mathematical terms that the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the voltages around the closed loop. Now when we say EMS, we're talking about the battery. So let's just say here you've got the battery. And then you've got components here. So you've got, so let's just say you've got two batteries at the top. You've got two resistors and a bulb at the bottom. And let's just say that this was... Uh, 6 volts and 3 volts and you're measuring the voltage across these three components so it states that the sum of the EMFs must be the same as the sum of the voltages around the closed loop so if you so what's 6 plus 3 so that's 9 so the total EMF is 9 so therefore v1 plus v2 plus v3 
must be equal to 9. So that is using this. So the total EMF, the total battery voltage is equal to 9 because you've got 6 volts and 3 volts. And if you were to measure the voltages across the three components, you would get V1 across the resistor, V2 across the bulb, V3 across the other resistor. So when you add those three voltages, you should end up with 9 volts. So that is basically Kirchhoff's second law. Now let's talk about the series circuit. So a series circuit, there's only one path for the current, and the current is the same everywhere in that circuit. So if we use Kirchhoff's first law, the rate of flow of charge is the same everywhere, because the charge is not used up, it just flows around the circuit. So let me just quickly draw a circuit. Let's just say this is the ammeter. So you've got two resistors and you've got two ammeters. Now because you have because you have one loop, the current in that loop is the same everywhere. So let's just say that this is I1 and this is I2. So I1 is equal to I2 because it's the same current everywhere in series. So it is the same everywhere. The current is the same in a series circuit because there's only one loop. There are no, there is not more than one loop. So therefore the current is the same everywhere. However, what about the voltage? So now let's just say that this is the EMF. This is the EMF. And you're measuring the voltage across here. So this is V1. And this is V2. So you know that the sum of the EMF is equal to the sum of the potential differences across the components. So V1 plus V2 is equal to the EMF. So let's just say that's 12 volts. So therefore V1 plus V2 will be equal to 12. So let's just say 1 was 6. If they both have the same resistance, they will share the same voltage. Because they have the same resistance. So let's just say that's 6 volts plus 6 volts and that would equal to 12 so if they both have the same resistance they will share equally the voltages across the components what about a parallel circuit so let's just draw a parallel circuit Alright, so I've drawn a circuit. So can you see at the top you've got an EMF, you've got an ammeter at the start and at the end, and then there are three branches. 
So in the first branch, there are two resistors. In the second branch, you've got two resistors. And in the third branch, you've got, you've just got one resistor. And the voltages is across the resistors. So let's just call this R1, R2, R3, and R5. All right, so um, now because the branches, they get split, that means the current will be split. However, if you apply Kirchhoff's second law, so if you apply Kirchhoff's first law here, can you see this is Kirchhoff's um, uh, Kirchhoff. <laughs> first law so let's just say that this is i this is i1 and this is i2 i3 so i3 and i2 so can you see that i1 is equal to i2 plus i3 so the current is split now if you apply Kirchhoff's second law The EMF is equal to V1 plus V2. Similarly here, EMF is equal to V3 plus V4 in that closed loop. Because in a parallel circuit, there's one loop here. There's the second loop is here. That's the second loop. And the third loop, this is the third loop. Let me... Um, So the second loop is so that's the second loop, and the third loop is okay. So the first loop, second loop. And the third loop. So Kirchhoff's second law, EMF, is equal to V1 plus V2. So the sum of the voltages, the potential difference, is equal to the sum of EMF. And the second loop, V3 plus V4, is equal to the EMF. And V5 is equal to the EMF. All right. So if that's I1, I3 and I2, let's just say that this is I4 and this is I5. So now you have I2 is equal to I4 plus I5. 